Great. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, you may have heard a fair bit of chatter on the uh, forum lately about some anniversaries that are happening. I know that the Toronto Centre is celebrating a very big anniversary this year. But also the uh, CAO, which is the EC Car Astronomical Observatory up in the Blue Mountains, is celebrating its 20th year of operations. And for those that haven't been to the CAO, and I know there's going to be plenty of people that haven't been there because we've got you now between eight and 900 members and I'm pretty sure we haven't seen everybody up there yet. So um, just to let you know that uh, over the past 20 years that we've been operating that observatory, and by the way, this observatory is actually owned by the Toronto Centre, so it is ours. And uh, outside of our members, you know, it's arguably our most valuable asset that we have within the Toronto Centre. But over the past 20 years, our focus really has been on observational astronomy. In other words, you get your telescopes out there, you have a look at what's up in the heavens, and it's been absolutely wonderful. What we've also noticed it is that um, over the last five years or so, there's been a huge shift in our hobby uh, with the advent of better equipment, better software that allows imagers, amateurs like ourselves, to take images of deep sky objects that would rival what the professionals would have done 10 years ago. We're probably exceeding what the professionals have done 10 years ago. And so as we take a look at the CAO for the next 20 years, we realize that we really have to evolve with our hobby. And we're going to be making some significant investments in equipment up at the CAO to sort of bring us into the next 20 years of our hobby. So for those that don't know where it is, here's a map. This is a Google Maps uh, screenshot. Um, we are way down, where is my mouse? Ah, oh, there we are. We're way down here somewhere, okay? And people will remember where the DDO is, the David Dunlap Observatory. The CAO is way up there. It's right at the bottom of Georgian Bay. And you can see that uh, Collingwood is not too far away. It's right over there. The Blue Mountains, that's uh, the town formerly known as Thornbury, is uh, where we are. We are actually located uh, at the top of the Niagara Escarpment. And uh, beautiful skies. It's in sort of a Goldilocks zone for us here in the GTA. It's about a two-hour drive from most of Toronto, so it's an easy shoot for us to get there on a Friday after work or something like that. But it's far enough north that we've got some wonder, wonderful skies. And uh, as we uh, zoom in a little bit more, this is um, a satellite view through Google Maps. And you can see that's us. This is the Carr Astronomical Observatory. Now, this particular view by Google Maps is uh, oriented perfectly north-south. So we are situated on 51 acres, plus or minus, on top of the escarpment. So we we carry, uh, our property is sort of following the 18th side road, goes right about down here, down below the screen where you don't see anymore, and comes back up along over here. This area right along here, it's actually a side trail for the Bruce Trail. So we are right up against the Bruce Trail. Um, to the west is the Beaver Valley, and the Beaver Valley is an absolutely wonderful spot for all sorts of recreation. Now, there's you know, a beautiful river there that you can put in for canoeing and kayaking. The Bruce Trail is all around us. Um, we've got skiing and mountain biking all over the place. Uh, in the summertime, this whole area is a mecca for road cycling as well, too. So there's lots of recreation that happens along over here. And the fact that the Bruce Trail is actually nearby is relevant, as I'll point out to you later on. Um, we are on farmland, and uh, the, the space that we occupy for our observatory is just this little area, and the rest of it is all farmland. And so we actually have farming going on on our property. It's mostly hay nowadays, though we have had soy grown there in the past, but the soil there isn't really suitable for cash crops. What it really is suitable for is planting telescopes <laughs> and nurturing the uh, education of astronomy and allied sciences for our members and the public. And so we've spent a lot of time educating our members. We spent a lot of time doing public outreach at the CAO. And so 
what we're going to do is we're going to do an expansion. Now, to give you an idea of what you're looking at right now, uh, we have certain buildings at the CAO which are aligned perfectly uh, north-south, astronomically north-south, not magnetically, okay? So over here, and I'll show you more pictures of that later on, that's the main observatory, that's the Jeff Brown Observatory. That is perfectly north-south. That is the observing pad where we can set up our own telescopes on tripods or something like that. That is perfectly east-west. Along here, well, there's Google Maps is a little bit outdated. There are, you'll see four domes over there. These are private observatories. There's a fifth one now, which Dennis Gray actually owns uh, down over here, and there is another roll-off observatory over there. There is another observatory over here. This is the house, and this is, this is the best part of the CAO because you can stay up until really late at night, and when you're good and tired, you don't have to pack up. You don't have to drive home. Got a three-bedroom house there. So let's take a little bit of a tour. We're going up the driveway of the CEO right now. This is in the fall. This is going back, I think, uh, maybe uh, three or four years. You can see we just passed a post. That's part of our uh, planet walk. We've got the sun at the base of the driveway all the way up to Neptune because pl uh, Pluto's not a planet anymore. See the house on the east. We're looking now at the Jeff Brown Observatory. This is our main observatory uh, uh, for our main telescope. And the reason I'm showing you this particular view is that just behind that to the west of the Jeff Brown Observatory, you'll see this empty platform. We're going to make use of that this year. Inside the Jeff Brown Observatory over here, you'll see this is our main telescope. It's a Celestron SET 14 inch a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Piggybacked on top of that is a four inch refractor, a Teleview refractor. So this roof will retract all the way back. There's also a warm room in there. That's uh, Blake Nancaro walking up to it, if you recognize him. That's our house. And if you come up to the CAO, that's where you'll be spending your evenings and weekends when you're not doing observing. And off to the distance to the north, that's Georgian Bay. So from our deck, you'll have this wonderful view of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of Georgian Bay as well, too. So what are we going to do this year? Well, inside the Jeff Brown Observatory, we currently have an absolutely wonderful mount. It's a Paramount ME. So it is the top of the line uh, mount for carrying telescopes. Uh, it is robotically controlled. On top of that right now is a 14-inch telescope. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, I would say that it's probably a little bit past its best before date. The views through that are maybe not as pristine as we would like. And so what we're going to do is we're going to replace it this year with a 16-inch uh, truss tube uh, Ritchie Kretchen telescope. And an RC telescope is predominantly uh, meant for imaging. Uh, instead of the spherical mirror, uh, which you would normally see in a SET, it actually has two hyperbolic mirrors, the primary and the secondary. And what that does is that it takes away a lot of the uh, third order uh, problems, uh, errors uh, in the optics. And, what, and it has absolutely crystal clear views. When you get a telescope of this class, you know you're getting excellent optics. And uh, although an RC or a Ritchie Chrétien telescope is not normally used for visual observing, trust me, it's fabulous. It has a larger secondary, but the optics are so wonderful that uh, one look through it and you'll be absolutely in awe. Uh, it is, uh, has a focal ratio of f8, which is uh, significantly faster than the existing Schmidt uh, Cassegrain telescope that we have there. So the focal length of these two telescopes, one being a 14-inch, the other, the new one that we're going to get being a 16-inch, they're going to be roughly about the same. So we're still going to uh, mount the uh, refractor, which is a Teleview 101-millimeter uh, uh, on top of that. That's used for uh, hydrogen alpha as well as uh, wide-field observing. So we do um, observing uh, in daytime. Uh, in uh, hydrogen alpha through the Teleview refractor. We also do white light. Uh, currently through the uh, C14, I think we're going to have to figure out what we want to do for white light uh, uh, going forward once we do the replacement. 
So that should happen sometime this summer. Um, we'll be getting us some additional accessories to go along with it. And it will be one heck of a visual uh, system. It can be used for um, imaging as well too, but our main intent right now is that we're gonna use it for visual. One of the things that I'd like to do as well too at CAO this year is I want to train up a lot more of our members on how to drive the system as well too. In the past, if you've visited the uh, Car Astronomical Observatory, and, and Dennis is gonna be uh, one of our supervisors very early on in the season, typically what we do is we have the supervisor in the control room, he is uh, controlling the telescope and he's giving us the play-by-play -play of what we're looking at in the sky. What I'm hoping that we can do this year is that as our members come up to the CAO, I just don't want to give them the fish, I want to teach them how to fish. And so, what I would like to do uh, is uh, get more and more of our members knowledgeable in how to run the system so that you know the, the supervisor can actually walk away because really the supervisors have so many responsibilities when they're up there. They can't afford to be inside that GB all the time. And we're gonna let our members take a go at it as well too. It's dead simple once you've been taught. So hopefully we'll get some of that going on uh, this year as well too. Um, we are now going to this year build a dedicated imaging observatory. So as we have the Jeff Brown Observatory right now that we're dedicating for visual astronomy, we're going to build a new observatory on that deck. And it will be dedicated for uh, astrophotography and it's gonna be for the use of our members when they go up there. It will be for use when we have public outreach events as well too. To give you an idea of what it could look like, this picture was taken just this winter, as a matter of fact, uh, by Ian Wheelband. This is actually his observatory on site at the CAO. It is a mini version, if you will, of the Jeff Brown Observatory, so it's a roll-off shed, and we're gonna be building something like this onto that observatory. So it's gonna be about a, a 10 by 12. And when it's on the observatory, this is sort of a panorama view taken by Ian this winter of what it looks like from that little, uh, from that uh, deck right now. So we've got almost a 180 degree view over here. So along here, that's east, south is along here, and west is gonna be right along over here. So you can see there's lots and lots of sky over there. And the fact that it's right beside the Jeff Brown Observatory isn't gonna be a problem whatsoever for the imagers. As most of the serious imagers will say, they don't even wanna take a picture of anything below 30 plus degrees above the horizon. I know I've taken stuff at 10 degrees above it just because I'm not very good. But, <laughs> and I don't know better maybe. But uh, the idea over here is that um, we're going to be able to book time with our members when they go up there. And uh, as Dennis uh, alluded, you know, as we get into the summertime, we don't have a lot of hours of really, truly dark skies for imagers. You know, it can be somewhere between four and a half to five and a half hours in the middle of summertime. So we think that we're gonna be able to get sort of two segments uh, in per night during the summertime. We might get more sort of in the margins of the season. And what we're gonna put in there is uh, we're gonna put another paramount uh, mount in there. It's by, made by Software Bisque. Uh, they are arguably one of the leading uh, manufacturers of uh, robotic telescope mounts. This is uh, a paramount uh, MYT. They call it the Mighty because it's, uh, it's small, but it's mighty. Uh, paramount or software BISC basically has three ranges or three levels of mounts depending on you know, how much payload you're carrying and what you need. The paramount ME, which is what we have uh, in the Jeff Brown Observatory, would be considered top of the line. The MX line is sort of middling and the mighty would be sort of at their lower end, but you know it is significantly uh, better than a lot of the other commercial mounts that are available right now. We will put on top of it an eight inch Ritchie Cretien telescope. So it'll have the same kind of optical design as the new telescope that we're gonna be putting into the Jeff Brown Observatory, but eight inches instead of, uh, instead of 16 inches, 
as well, we will have an 80 millimeter uh, uh, apochromatic refractor on there. It will have a guide scope. It'll have a guide camera. It, there will be a laptop attached to it. There'll be software preloaded. All you have to do is BYO DSLR, slap it on either one of those telescopes, and you're off to the races. You know, we will give you some very rudimentary uh, instructions on how to use the system, but our expectations are that those that will be booking time on there, uh, we expect them to do a little bit of their own homework as well, too, uh, because uh, we won't have the time or the capability with all of our volunteers to sort of provide in-depth training for every single person that wants to use it. So we expect you to do some of your own homework, but we will help you out. So this is pretty exciting because this will be the first time that we've actually ha had a dedicated imaging observatory at the CAO um, based on whether or not we can get some uh, more robust internet connection up at the CAO. You know, it might even give us the oppor opportunity to do some remote imaging, but I think that's going to be a few years down the road. Regardless, you know, when we are up there at the CAO, whether it's a weekend uh, when it's being supervised, supervised or even on a weekday when we have um, experienced uh, members up there, we could actually use that system for public outreach here in Toronto. So for example, if we've got uh, an event going on at the Ontario Science Centre, you know, we could actually have a link to this particular observatory up at the CAO, and we can live stream what that camera is seeing as we go. So I think that's come some of the exciting stuff that's going to be happening. Uh, in terms of adding some uh, imaging capability uh, to the CAO and upgrading our visual astronomy. One of the things that uh, we have to deal with once in a while is that we do a lot of public outreach at the CAO, and well, that's a good thing. And we've become uh, very well known within the community of the Blue Mountains, within uh, Collingwood and the whole surrounding area. We have lots of people that come up all the time when we have uh, certain open houses and all that sort of thing. Um, the downside is that now everybody knows we're there. And when we're not there, or sometimes when we are there, we get um, some folks, um, sometimes teenagers in fast cars, uh, <laughs> that might decide they want to pay a visit thinking that it's not occupied. And they think that's a great place to get away from mom and dad, or maybe it's a great place to bring your boyfriend or girlfriend or something like that thinking you've got some privacy. And they come up our driveway and they shine the lights on us and they ruin our night vision because we happen to be there, either doing some visual astronomy or doing some imaging. So what we're going to do uh, this year as well, too, is we're going to put a gate across the, the base of our driveway. So it's just going to come along in here. Uh, that'll just sort of uh, prevent some of the yahoos from driving up there when we're over there, but it'll also provide us with a little bit more security because it will be a locked gate when we're not... Uh, uh, physically occupying the site and uh, this gate over here that's literally just across the path from us um, and uh, as a matter of fact that property this property uh, previously belonged to uh, Cliff Carr and uh, uh, the reason our property is called the Carr Astronomical, Astronomical Observatory Observatory is because Cliff donated the land and uh, the house to us, to the Toronto Centre. That used to be his uh, property. He has sadly passed away a number of years ago. It's uh, under new ownership, but you know the idea is that we're going to be putting a gate similar like that in front of our driveway as well, too. So, it's 20 years now that we've been at the CAO. We're getting ready for the next 20 years, but we're going to have a bit of celebration before that happens. That's going to be going on all summer. So we've got a bunch of stuff going on this year. The first one is in May. It's the weekend just after the May 2-4 weekend. That's our spring work party. On the forum, you will have seen a posting by Laura Chow. She's my boss, also sometimes known as my wife. Um, she's the booking coordinator for the CAO. Uh, she's posted that uh, we're now accepting uh, reservations for the spring work party. Uh, we're going to, you know, uh, hopefully get 20 you know, plus people that will show up, help us. Um, uh, if you show up to work, you know, we'll, we'll feed and water you. You know, your stay over there will be uh, at no charge. And uh, if you think once in a while when you come to these meetings and you get into a room and there might be 60, 70, 80 people and it seems like you never get to really know anybody really well, 
believe me, you go up to the CAO, you spend a weekend at a work party, and you're working you know, elbow to elbow, side by side with somebody, you're breaking bread with them, you're having some laughs and some astronomy in the evenings with them, you'll make some fast friends, you'll get to know your fellow members. So, you know, when you get a chance to go to the CAO, it's not just about the astronomy, it's about the fellowship as well too. Um, June 23-24 weekend, we're going to have a rocket building workshop. Hey, rocket, rocketry is part of astronomy, right? And Tony Horvatton is uh, going to be leading that uh, workshop. Uh, those that have been to our open houses and awards picnics in the past know that we love our rockets and we're going to shoot up a whole pot of rockets during our open houses. Well, this is a chance for our members, this, this is a members only event, to join us at the CAO, learn how to build your own rocket. Um, the, the weekend is free for you to participate, uh, though you will be asked to pay for the supplies as you build your own rocket. But the idea is that you'll learn how to build your own rockets. You'll be able to test fly it that weekend, assuming that we've got decent weather. And on the July 7th, 8th weekend, we have a rewards picnic and our CAO 20 celebrations up at the CAO. So the awards picnic is uh, the Toronto Centre's chance to honour those of our members who have done extraordinary things. Uh, and I, uh, Ralph may be talking a little bit more about that later on, so I'm not going to steal his thunder. Uh, but we will be handing out the awards for the Toronto Centre, and we always have a rocket show during the awards picnic. So I'm hoping that those folks that come up and build the rockets in June will come up again in July, bring the rockets, we're going to have a whole lot of fun. August 18th, that's a Saturday, we are going to have, uh, for the first time, a joint Beaver Valley Bruce, Bruce Trail Association <coughs> and Toronto Centre Hike, Potluck Dinner and Astronomy Day. Uh, I've mentioned to you that the Bruce Trail goes right past our property, it's the Margaret Paul Side Trail, and there's a dedicated group of volunteers with the Bruce Trail Association, they're part of the Beaver Valley group that spend time uh, maintaining the trails, making sure it stays clean, uh, removing any debris and all that sort of stuff. So they're a group of volunteers just like ourselves. I kind of like to think that they're also kindred spirits because you know, we as amateur astronomers, we have a great respect for the environment. We have a, a great respect for the flora and fauna. And I believe that the Bruce Trail folks you know, are of the same mind. The idea for that weekend is they've got a whole pile of members that are really interested in astronomy and it's a wonderful chance for us to do some outreach with them. So they're going to take us on a guided hike first during the day. There's a long hike and a short hike depending on what you, you know, want to do. And of course, you know, what better than to have experts uh, of these trails show us around. We're going to have a potluck dinner together and then we're going to give them a dog and pony show on astronomy as well too. So, you know, they're going to do something for us, we're going to do something for them. It's also a fundraiser for both organizations. So uh, we plan on charging $15 <coughs> a head for those that want to participate in this program. And the idea is that we're going to split the proceeds 50-50 between ourselves and the Beaver Valley Bruce Trail Association to support both our outreach programs. September weekend, 7th and 8th, we're going to hold the Astrophotography Workshop Part 2. Two years ago, we actually uh, held Part 1 up at the CAO, and that was for folks that had never been exposed or were very, very new to astrophotography. This was photography you know, with your DSLR on uh, a tripod, stationary tripod, or maybe on one of those smaller tracking mounts. Part 2 will be imaging through a telescope. And so uh, we're going to be uh, posting that event probably uh, in another couple of months or something like that. We're just organizing the logistics for that now. There will be some prerequisites for people that want to participate in it. But certainly, uh, I think that we may actually uh, have a bit of a sidebar uh, workshop for those that are absolutely brand new, and we might take them aside and maybe, you know, give them a, a quickie course on part one or something like that as well, too. But sort of stay tuned for those particular uh, details. We don't have that all fleshed out just yet. 
And finally, uh, in October, uh, we're going to have our fall work party as well, too. So the work parties are in the spring, you know, it's sort of like opening up your cottage. In the fall, it's sort of closing it down. The site is open, you know, 365. So it, it never closes, but we only supervise or, you know, sort of manage it uh, during the observing season, which is, we'll call it three seasons out of the four, if you will. In the wintertime, because the access to the car observatory, uh, the road access is not plowed by the town, you can't drive there. It's one of those you can't get there from here. So you've got to park a little distance away, then you've got to snowshoe in, you got to probably drag or carry your stuff into the uh, house on a sled or something like that. So access is a little bit more challenging in the wintertime, but if you're up to the challenge, it is open all year round. We only close for a few special events, uh, in particular when we have uh, scouts there because they would be considered um, a youth group and we don't want anyone there that doesn't have their appropriate uh, police checks and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, uh, generally speaking, it's open for our members year-round. So that's what we've got planned for the CAO uh, this year. Uh, I just did want to give some credit to the people that provided me with some Im images. The, uh, the drone video was done by Michael Story. This was done a few years ago, and Dietmar, who is sitting in our audience right now, he's kind of done all the uh, video Im uh, editing. Uh, this background, uh, this image right here that I've been using as a background, that was done by Katrina in Slum. This was uh, taken during the spring work party in 2013. This is a view uh, westward uh, just after sunset, which is why you're getting this lovely uh, orange glow. Uh, these three points of light are the th uh, three planet conjunction. You've got, uh, you got uh, Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus over there. And obviously I've uh, taken great liberties with uh, Google Maps. And that's it. Any questions? questions? Hello, Phil. Um, you mentioned the, Bob German here. Um, you mentioned the gate that is going to be installed in order to prevent access from what you call the Yahoos. Yeah. How are we who are non-Yahoo going on a routine basis to access this? Are we be giving a key or be, being an accommodation or what? Yeah, just like if you were to go up to the CO any time right now, if you're going uh, during a weekend when we actually have an on-site supervisor, the gate will be left open for our members. Uh, if you uh, want to go up during a weekday when uh, it is not supervised by one of uh, our staff, uh, unpaid staff, they're all volunteers, by the way, uh, the, the process right now is you get a key, you get a passcode, and the gate will actually have a padlock on it with a passcode on it as well, too, and you'll be given that as well, too. And just like with all the passcodes that we have for the house, uh, as well as for the gate, it'll be uh, that passcode we changed on a regular basis. You're welcome, Bob. Any other questions? Charlene? Just wondering what you're going to do with the 14-inch. Uh, we will likely sell it unless you want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the 14-inch uh, has uh, served us well for quite some time. Um, we find that the uh, views through that 14-inch are a little bit soft. The primary mirror is now, it does have a flaw on it. it. At the very edge, there's a bit of a crack on the very edge. Theoretically, it shouldn't really uh, have a major impact on uh, the views through that telescope. But generally speaking, I think we've got a um, Friday or a Monday scope. Ed? Do you want to talk now about any of the changes the first five visitors to the site? Um, uh, that, that's been well posted on both the website. It's uh, posted uh, when you first uh, go online to book, and it's been uh, posted on the uh, forum as well, too. Uh, so, no, I, I don't think I really want to spend a lot of time with that uh, right now. Any other questions? In, any chance the Rishi Chrétien scope will be ready for Mars opposition? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I don't have an update in terms of the delivery. Uh, uh, so, uh, Ron, the, the actual installation of the RC uh, is quite simple. Uh, 
Uh, it's literally just uh, demounting the existing C14, slapping that, uh, the uh, RC on, and you're good to go, except that we want to do some improvements in the wiring. So, you know, the wiring uh, uh, which comes from the warm room goes under the floor of the GBO and it goes up through the mount. It's a bit of a dog's breakfast right now. It's got cables in there that are now obsolete that don't go anywhere. It's got uh, styles of cables, serial cables and all sorts of weird things that really just aren't used a whole lot by uh, modern equipment. So we want to do a bit of a cleanup on, the, uh, on all of that wiring. So that's going to take a bit of time. Theoretically, what, a couple weekends, Dietmar, and we should get that done. So it's a matter of when we can get the delivery, and it'll be ready to go. We don't anticipate that the scope or that observatory will be out of commission for any length of time. Yeah. Bob? Uh, yeah, I have some business questions for the Mongolaska. Um, she's embarrassed. She doesn't want to appear to be a troublemaker. I quote you, Tessie. <laughs> um, there was mention made some little while ago of a hole in the road leading in, uh, and the municipality has to take some responsibility for that. Has that been addressed? Y yeah, uh, what happens is that the town does regrade the surface of the roadway, you know, typically a couple times a year. And uh, typically after winter when we've got a lot of you know, spring runoff, it creates a whole lot of ruts in the road. So if you've got a low slung car, you, know, you might have a few problems uh, getting through. If you had a uh, you know, four by four, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, when the snow finally melts, and it hasn't all melted yet, Bob and Tessie, it hasn't all melted yet, but once it does, uh, typically we give a call to the town and ask them to come by with their grader, and they're pretty good about that sort of thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Question? Sure, Paul. Uh, the Google satellite map has a very nice icon. Uh, it says Car Astronomical Observatory. It's almost like they know about us. They do know about us, as a matter of fact. Oh. We used to be one of those uh, great secrets that we didn't want everybody to know where we, were, where we are because we weren't there very often. You know, we were there on weekends, and it was sort of left uh, unoccupied during the uh, weekdays. That really doesn't happen as much anymore because, you know, we've got so many members that are interested in going up there during the weekdays that it's occupied a lot of the time. And we do a so much more public outreach that we're pretty well known. So if you actually Google or search Car Astrono Astronomical Observatory in Google Maps, it pops up. I have a question online. I believe it's when did you say the new scope was being installed? It'll be this summer. This summer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we anticipate it'll be there before our open house. The Sorry, the question was <coughs> when do we believe the new scope will be installed? Um, it'll be... Uh, the open house is in July, and it'll be, it'll be nip and tuck. Yeah. Uh, in June is when we expect to do um, the bulk of our construction for the imaging observatory. But that, that's a longer-term project. It will be done this year, but uh, it's most likely going to be fall before the imaging observatory is going to be done. In terms of the 16-inch uh, RC, Dietmar, do you have any further updates on the timing of that? Oh, I didn't like the sound of that. Okay. <laughs> this year. <laughs> yes, Paul. the air conditioning unit getting installed? Bring a fan. <laughs> no, we don't have air conditioning. Uh, we'll just open a couple of windows. <laughs> we actually don't need air conditioning, by the way, inside the uh, CAO. What's the brand of the scope? It's a GSO search. Uh, Guanchong Optical. Yeah, so uh, Guanchong Optical is a Chinese uh, manufacturer. They're also the same uh, people that do Skywatcher. Um, Celestron is owned by, Skywatcher is owned by Guanchong. So it's the same company. Yeah. Sinta owns Skywatcher. GSO is a competitor. Sorry, yeah, GSO is Taiwanese. Sinta is um, mainland China. It's GSO in Taiwan. Anything else? Okay, thank you.